What's up everybody? This is Mike the Developing Dad coming to you with another reflection on the Proverbs. It is April 23rd, 2020 and we're going to be in Proverbs 23 verses 4 and 5 and it reads, Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone. For suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Okay, so we've got some questions that we need to answer. Toiling to acquire wealth, but be discerning enough to desist. So is wealth inherently bad? That's what some people may take from this verse, but I don't think that that's what it's trying to say. I think we can get caught up in this idea um, between the prosperity gospel and the the poverty gospel, right? The prosperity gospel makes inroads in places where people are poor because they want better. They they understand that wealth is a good thing. That to have me to have the means to pay for things, to have the means to eat, to have the means to shelter yourself. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, we see in the scriptures Abraham had wealth, great wealth. Job had great wealth. David had great wealth. Solomon had great wealth. God does not look upon wealth as a bad thing. He gives wealth as a gift. Okay, so wealth, I don't believe, is inherently bad. If it were inherently bad, then God himself could be accused of sin, right? Because he says here, right, in Psalm 24, 1, the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. So everything's God, right? He has great wealth. He, he owns all things. Okay, in Psalm 50, 11, he says, I know all the birds of the hills. And all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world and its fullness are mine. So everything belongs to God. And that's a key thing for believers to recognize. For us to recognize that we are not a slave to money. We don't worship money. Our love for God should trump our love for money. And that's why when we toil, we're toiling for the Lord. We're not toiling for the money in itself. We, yes, we may earn good, we may earn wealth, but our love is, is or our work is done out of a love for God. Let's take a look at that in 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, and this is his admonition to Timothy, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. So we've been we've been given the antidote instead of pursuing uh, money and the love of money and wealth as our primary focus. Pursue these other things, these godly things, right? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. And we will work heartily as unto the Lord and wealth will come to us. But we'll know what to do with it. We'll know who whose wealth it is. It's not ours. Remember, we've been told we can't take it with us. We brought nothing into the world and we can't take it with us. Every, every man that dies leaves everything that he had here. Okay, so uh, that should be uh, instructive for us in that we should have a place an idea of what we should be trying to do, where our wealth and where our treasure should be laid up. And Jesus lays it out for us perfectly in Matthew 6, 19, where he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures in, on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, There your heart will be also. It always goes back to the heart. What is the heart of the matter? The matter of the heart. Our hearts need to be attuned to God. We need to focus on him. We need to uh, live our lives in such a way that glorifies and honors him. That's our whole purpose. Money will come. Money will go. Uh, You know, wealth and all these other things. Everything that that I've ever owned up until this point, none of it's still perfect. None of of it is um, unperishable. The only thing that's imperishable is the inheritance that I have with Christ 
in the heavenly kingdom. And, and when he comes back, he's going to make it all new, the new heavens and the new earth. That's where my inheritance is. And that's where I want to store up my, my treasures. And that's what we should be thinking. Store up our treasures there. That's what's most important. Okay. <clears throat> and, and what happens is when we realize this, we get to see, we get the spirit uh, works in us and it helps us to see who truly our master is okay and that's a, a really important topic for us to discuss when it comes to God and money you can't serve both you can't be a slave to both you, you're going to be bound to one or bound to the other Matthew six twenty four says no one can serve two masters and you see this is the same Greek word where we get slave um, the doulos uh, that's that's what it means bondage okay no one can be in bondage to two masters for either he will hate the uh, hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and money you can't be bound to both you can't be bound to both it's impossible because if you love money you're going to hate god because god's going to want you to use it your money to his glory right that's what he wants from us and if god is telling you to use your use he's telling us use your money to my glory and we're like well i want to spend it on what i want to spend it on well then that's that's where that friction is going to come in you can't can't do both if you're thinking about comfort and luxury and all these other things and we think about that stuff a lot right in american culture especially since stuff's been stripped away from us recently uh but god is saying use your money or use our money uh, to help the poor, to help, you know, to raise up a godly family, use it in these areas, um, spend it on things that may not be uh, more, ben it may not be beneficial to your kingdom, but it will be a beneficial to uh, to our kingdom, but it, it will be a beneficial to God's kingdom, right? So we're always thinking about kingdom living, all right? So one of the reasons why we've been told this uh, in this proverb, I think, in the second clause, it says, when your eyes light on it, it is gone. For suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Money is fleeting. Godliness is uh, is stable. It's something that you can actually hold on to. Okay, money can be easily taken away. Let's take a look at an example of, of that from the scriptures. Now we know personally, uh, and what we've been dealing with recently, 25 million people are unemployed. Their money has been taken away from by the government shutdown. So that's one way money can be taken away. Right. Your, their millstone has been taken away. Their ability to make money has been taken away. You got lawsuits, all kind of other reasons money can be taken away. Right. It's paper and it can just be it can be burned. Right. Possessions can burn. They rust. They destroy. Right. We talked about that. But here's here's the ultimate reason why you should not focus in on money as your primary goal. OK, it says in here, Luke chapter 12, verse 16, he says, and he told them a parable, Jesus talking speaking in parables the land of a rich man produced plentifully and he thought to himself what shall i do for i have nowhere to store my crops and he said i will do this i will tear down my barns and build larger ones and there i will store all my grain and my goods and i will say to my soul soul you have ample goods laid up for many years relax eat drink be merry but god said to him fool this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared whose will they be so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward god that's the whole point of this godliness and contentment godliness and contentment cannot be taken away because you're storing up treasures in heaven where where rust and uh thieves don't you know, wrath and uh, rust and moth just don't destroy and thieves can't break in and steal here Everything that you have will be will perish. But but if you walk in godliness, that will never perish. You will be able to stand on the last day and say, Lord, I walked in godliness. Thank you for your grace. I work. I did the works that you called me to do. And he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. So we should suffer well here. Remember, we may not have all the money that we that we desire, but work hardly as unto the Lord. If you're scrubbing floors, scrub floors unto the Lord. If you're washing dishes, wash your, dish, wash your dishes unto the Lord. There's no menial task in the kingdom of God, especially if it's all done with him as the, as the uh, primary reason, as contentment in God as the primary reason. I'm going to bid you grace and peace on that. Uh, this one went a little long. I know y'all roll with me for a little while. I love y'all. Grace and peace. <laughs>